Starting with the most basic symbols, the plus sign is widely known as the symbol for addition. The minus sign is basically the opposite. It's used for subtraction, but it can also represent negative numbers. The multiplication sign shows the operation of multiplying two numbers and is sometimes written as a dot. The division sign stands for division, which is the inverse of multiplication, and can also appear as a slash. The plus minus sign means either plus or minus. It's often used to indicate a range of values. Its counterpart, the minus plus sign, is used alongside the plus minus to show the opposite combination of signs. For instance, the expression could mean a plus b minus c or a minus b plus c. Both signs can't be the same at once. The equal sign, made up of two lines of equal length, shows that two expressions are equal. Its opposite is the not equal sign, which means the expressions are not equal. The approximately equal sign is used when two values aren't exactly the same, but are close enough. A tilde can also be used instead, though it can also mean similarity or proportionality. This other symbol, which looks like an unfinished infinity sign, is also used to show proportionality. The triple bar, or equivalent sign, is sometimes used to show an identity, but more commonly, it's used to indicate congruence in modular arithmetic. The less than symbol is used to show that one value is smaller than another. Its opposite, the greater than symbol, shows that one value is larger than another. When you add a line to the less than symbol, it becomes the less than or equal to sign, meaning the value is either smaller or equal. The greater than or equal to sign works the same way, just in the opposite direction. Using two less than signs gives the much less than symbol. And likewise, two greater than signs mean much greater than. The root symbol represents the square root of a number. When an integer greater than two is written as a left superscript, it indicates the nth root of that number. The empty set symbol represents a set with no elements. The number sign, also called octothorpe or hashtag, often shows the cardinality of a set, which means the number of elements it contains. The in symbol means that something belongs to a set, while the not in symbol shows that an element is not part of the set. The set inclusion symbol shows that one set is a subset of another. When a line is added to it, the symbol still shows set inclusion, but also allows for the sets to be equal. If that line is crossed, the symbol represents a proper subset, meaning the sets are not equal. The smaller set is fully contained within the larger one, but is not the same. The union symbol represents the operation of combining two sets, resulting in a new set that includes all unique elements from both. The intersection symbol is used when combining two sets, but the result only includes the elements they have in common. The set difference, shown with a backslash, gives a set containing all the elements from the first set that are not in the second. The symmetric difference, shown with a triangle or a circled minus, results in a set that contains all the elements that are in either one of the sets, but not in both. Capital letters written in blackboard bold typeface are typically used to represent the standard number systems. N stands for the set of natural numbers. Z represents the set of integers. Q is the set of rational numbers. R denotes the set of real numbers. C refers to the set of complex numbers. H stands for the set of quaternions. O refers to the set of octonions. U is used to represent the universal set, which includes all possible values in a given context. The negation symbol is used in logic to show the opposite of a statement. The OR operator returns true if at least one of the conditions is true. The AND operator only returns true if both conditions are true. The exclusive OR operator returns true if only one of the conditions is true, but not both. The T symbol, also called T, represents a logical constant for something that is always true. The up tax symbol stands for something that is always false. The universal quantifier is used to say that a statement is true for all elements in a given domain. The existential quantifier says that there is at least one element for which the statement is true. The uniqueness quantifier goes a step further. It says there is exactly one element in the domain for which the statement holds true. The conditional operator represents an implication between two statements. If the first is true, then the second must also be true. The logical equivalence operator shows that both statements have the same truth value. In Lagrange's notation, an apostrophe is used to indicate the derivative of a function. A second apostrophe stands for the second derivative, a third for the third derivative, and so on. In Newton's notation, a dot above the variable is used to denote a derivative, typically with respect to time. Adding a second dot represents the second derivative in time. Leibniz's notation expresses the derivative as a fraction, with the function or variable on top, and the variable it's differentiated with respect to at the bottom. If the d in Leibniz's notation is rounded, it signifies a partial derivative, which applies when dealing with functions of multiple variables. 
The integral symbol represents an antiderivative, which is essentially the inverse operation of taking a derivative. When written with a subscript and superscript, the integral symbol represents a definite integral used to calculate the area under a curve or the accumulation of a quantity over a specific interval. An arrow is often used to define a function without giving it an explicit name. Function composition refers to the process of combining two functions into one. The logarithm is the inverse of exponentiation. A subscript indicates the base of the logarithm. If there is no subscript, the base is assumed to be 10. The natural logarithm, written as ln, represents the logarithm with base e. A limit describes how a function or expression behaves as the input approaches a specific value. The stylized r symbol is used for the real part of a complex number, while fancy i represents the imaginary part. Placing a bar above a complex number denotes its complex conjugate, which simply changes the sign of its imaginary part. The Greek letter sigma signifies the summation of a series of terms. Capital pi functions similarly, but is used to denote a product of terms. The infinity symbol represents the idea of unboundedness, indicating a value greater than any finite quantity. The aleph symbol denotes the cardinality of infinite sets. For instance, aleph null represents the size of the set of natural numbers. The fractor C symbolizes the cardinality of the real numbers, another form of infinity. A factorial multiplies a number by all positive integers less than it. The binomial coefficient, which looks like a fraction without a line, indicates the number of ways to choose k elements from a set of n. The absolute value of a number represents its distance from zero on the number line. The floor function gives the greatest integer less than or equal to a value, while the ceiling function returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to it. The nearest integer function does just what it says, rounds to the closest whole number. A single vertical line represents divisibility. A crossed line denotes non-divisibility. Two parallel lines indicate parallelism, while crossed parallel lines show non-parallelism. An upside-down T denotes perpendicularity, and in some contexts, it may also indicate that two numbers are coprime. A bar over two points represents a line segment between them. An arrow over two points denotes a ray starting at the first point and extending toward the second. An arrow in both directions represents an infinite line passing through both points. 